Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 7. For if that the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place had been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, it saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant, that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, Hawayala. I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, And we do in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy be bound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that are waiting on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Of course, wanted to go into a lesson concerning, uh, as you've seen here, the new covenant. And the reason why we have to discuss this is because um, a lot of times people, um, you know, talk about the new covenant, especially in regards to modern day Christianity, that it it's for all people. And we've also shown many times that the new covenant is only for the nation of Israel, okay, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Okay, which is the 12 tribes that are appointed to get, you know, the new covenant and inherit everlasting life, those that believe on Yahweh Shai. So we have to understand that one of the reasons why we have to go into these things over and over again is because of the fact that people, you know, over the last, you know, few hundred years have basically have pushed a, a covenant doctrine of what is known as replacing theology where the other nations have access to this new covenant and the Israelites don't, which would actually be counter to the promises that the Most High made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and through, you know, through David and through the various prophets who prophesied concerning this. Also, it would be contradictory to what the apostles um, and the disciples of our Lord back in, you know, in the ancient times, back 2,000 years ago, said concerning you know this, in fact, we're reading out of Hebrews, okay, which is during the time of the apostles. So what we have to understand is that people are going to misconstrue what we're teaching and say that it's hate when it's actually the most high showing love and concern for his own people. So let's go ahead first and look at this again. Um, when we go down to this, it says... In verse 10, for this is the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Okay, it's very clear that it's a particular set of people that will get this, not all people. It says also, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Now, one of the issues that we were having as a people, and we're still having, is that we have to continue to teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother to know the Lord. You got to continue to raise up your children in the fear and admonition of the Lord because they not they do not know him. Okay? That's why we still have to do those things. In the time of the new covenant, that will not be needed because everybody that's around under this covenant will know the Lord, whether they are a person, a kid, or a, or a man, a grown man, a woman, Male, female, it's not going to matter. Everybody's going to know the Lord. They're going to know how to properly serve the Lord because why? According to verse 10, he will put the law in their minds and write them in their hearts. That will allow them to enact what is in the covenant, which is the blessings of the covenant, which in order for us to receive those blessings, we have to be perfect in the law and we have to be operating that way in order to receive those blessings. And that's the activation of, that is going to be put inside of those that are in the new covenant from the house of Israel, from the house of Judah, 
that will allow them to receive these things. Now, let's deal with this part. Teach every man his neighbor. Now, who is the neighbor that is talking about and the brother according to the scriptures? Okay, so when you go into Leviticus chapter 19, okay, and we'll go into verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So your brother and your neighbor, okay, right here is who it's referring to is, is who you would end up having to rebuke, correct, to not suffer sin upon them because you're still trying to teach one another to know the Lord, okay? So that's why here we had to do that all the time among our people because not all of us knew the Lord like that, nor was the laws within us to where we could, where everybody could be on that level of not having to be uh, taught. Everybody had to be taught at some point or another to know the Lord, okay? So now we're looking and identifying what is this teaching your every man his neighbor to know the Lord and everyone shall know him from the least to the greatest. Now, how do we know that it's still talking about the people of Israel? When we go into verse 18, it says, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am Yahweh. So again, the children of thy people is what? Your brother and also your neighbor. Okay? That's who we're talking about. When we're referring to this new covenant, that's who the Lord is talking about in regards to the new covenant. Now, to go even further on, let's go into another area of the law, which is the book of Deuteronomy. Now, Deuteronomy, as you see here in the title of this chapter, is called Restoration Promise. Now, remember, we were getting the law under Moses when the Most High was establishing us as a people to inherit the land of our forefathers that was promised to them. So why is there a promise of restoration? Because there was going to be a falling away that was going to occur that was going to lead to us needing to be restored, which is in the time period that we're at right now. So when we go into Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 1, it says here, And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God had driven thee. In the first verse, it's telling the people, when you've received the blessing and the curse, and you're scattered among these other nations, and you call to mind these blessings and cursings among all these nations, because we were going to be driven to these other nations. Okay? Let's get that real quick. And to show that Yahushai talked about this. Just to establish that. See, this, this, these precepts right here are, are Christian killers. Okay? These are WMDs. Okay? Weapons of mass destruction. Alright? For Christian doctrine. Okay? So uh, let's go to verse uh, 24 in Luke chapter 21. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. Okay, the Lord drove us into all nations, led us away into captivity, drove us through various means into the all nations, whether it was straight captivity, whether it was looking for better economic opportunities, we were fleeing from land to land. That with our, we everywhere we went, we our soul we couldn't rest because of the persecution and the tribulations and the things that we we're going through as a people, and this made us to be captives amongst all these other nations. And what will happen? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time that the Gentiles be fulfilled. So, this is what was going to happen. After that happens, the return of the Messiah is going to come to redeem those that were scattered that believed upon him. But we were going to be driven first, of course, to these other nations. Okay, so let's go back to Deuteronomy. Let's go down to verse 2. And shalt return unto the Yahweh thy God, and shalt obey his voice, according to all that I commanded thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, 
then Yahweh thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all nations whither Yahweh thy God had scattered thee. Okay? So the Most High was going to be a time where he was going to gather us, okay, those that are of the elect, all right, from all the nations where they were scattered, okay? And in fact, we can even get that. Because if you're, we're, we're, we're scattered, it tells you we're scattered into all the nations of the earth, into the four corners of the earth. Now we can also get another one from Yahweh Shai as well. Let's here you see the glorious return right here, right? Now remember in the Luke 21, it talks about his return as well. Because remember, this goes back to this Luke 21 as well. There is also Mark 13. So after the, we're scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, then there was going to be a deliverance from scattered from the four corners of the earth where they will be delivered out. So we'll go into, we'll start at verse 29 in Matthew chapter 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the man, son of man coming in the clouds of of heaven with power and great glory now this is also written in Revelation uh, chapter 1 okay it says and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds of the earth from one end of the heaven to the other okay because again the Israelites were going to be scattered to all these other nations where the Lord had driven them and then they were going to call to mind the blessing and the cursing they were going to believe in Yahweh and through that and seeking him through the mediator, through seeking the, uh, the Most High through the mediator Yahweh they were going to be forgiven of their iniquities and be delivered. Okay, and have the laws put in their heart upon the return and the creation of the kingdom. They won't have to teach every man his brother and every man his neighbor. Okay, so that's all linking up right there. Now let's go ahead and continue on. Okay, and it says the same thing here in verse four, actually saying exactly what Yahweh said in Matthew 24. Okay, if any of thine be driven out unto the uttermost part of heaven, from thence will Yahweh thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And he's going to use Yahweh Shai. That's why it says it here. We go back again. It literally just says that. Okay. He will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other so he said it don't matter how far you are of the elect if any of thine be in the outmost parts of heaven from thence will the lord thy god yahweh thy god gather thee and from thence will he fetch thee okay and he's going to send his son to do it okay because most high delivers his people through a actual chosen person a person he'll raise up to do it select to help deliver the people he did it with Moses, which is a foreshadowing of what the Yahweh Shai was going to do when he comes. Okay? So, as we go on, verse 5, And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And Yahweh thy God will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed to live to love the Yahweh, the Lord thy God, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, and that thou mayest live. So he's going to put the word, this is where it was, okay, in our heart and in our mind, that we may be able to serve him fully. And what he will do after that? Verse 7, And Yahweh thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Okay, and who are these enemies? These other nations where we were scattered to. Okay, that held us captive and refused to let us go. Because the elites of these other nations know that they're supposed that if they were in that if they knew any better, if they if they should do better, they should actually clear that land, 
get the United Nations to clear that land and, and get the, the true descendants of Israel to get that land and to treat us right. But they can't do it right now because they have to fulfill the one prophecy too because they're our enemies. So if the enemies ain't going to help you. They're not going to give you that all that stuff. They're going to want you to be uh, destitute and without. Okay, they want you to be in a state of confusion. So the, and the Most High will change that upon the re return of Yahweh Shai. Now, let's see whether or not these other nations are actually going to be able to um, be in the New Covenant. It's very obvious we're seeing that they're not, but how do we know that there's a sign that they would not have that New Covenant ability? Okay, that is only for the nation of Israel. Well, let's go into Zechariah. So Zechariah 14 and 13 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from Yahweh shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. Okay, so Judah is going to fight and he's going to take the wealth of all these different nations. Okay, in the time, in the, in the end times. And they're going to gather it together in great abundance. Okay? The heathen are going to have to come up off that. Okay, because that's going to be Israel's. Verse 15 says, And so shall the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem, okay, is, gonna, is basically the city of the elect. It's known, also known in the Bible as the New Jerusalem, okay? So these other nations don't even know that they're actually coming up against the inhabitants of Jerusalem when they're, when they're persecuting them. They're going to know on that day that they were persecuting, all right, the New Jerusalem that the Most High is going to select and elect, okay? So we have to understand that these other nations are not going to get this inheritance, they are part of the reason why we were in the condition we were in. But also, they're going to be part of the reason why we're going to be able to be rulers because of the fact that in order to have a kingdom, you need to have subjects. And the subjects, according to the scriptures, is these other nations, as you're going to see. Okay? So, as we go further along, it says again, and it shall come to pass, that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, right, Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So hold on. If the new covenant was for these other nations, if the kingdom of heaven is set and these other nations are around, According to Christianity, everybody that's still, that's left around in the kingdom of heaven are all going to willingly serve the Lord. They're all going to willingly do it because everybody that's not a believer is going to be cast into hell. And the only people that are going to be around are going to be just the believers in the kingdom of heaven with no subjects. That makes no sense at all. How do you have a kingdom with no subject? This is one of the reasons why in Modern Christianity, people have a hard time trying to understand what are they really getting by actually serving who they believe the Lord to be. They're actually more motivated to not get into hell than they are to inherit the kingdom. Because inheriting the kingdom, it doesn't seem like a lot of fun. Because according to them, you, you, there's no, there's, there's no uh, desires that are there's no righteous desires that men can have in the kingdom, such as having, you know, a, a, a big family, wives, houses, uh, a, a castles, abundance, gold, silver, 
clothing, apparel, somebody making it for you, somebody waiting on you, somebody working in your vineyard, making your wine, you know, raising your crops, raising your animals. None of that stuff exists in the mind of a modern Christian as far as what the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven is because it doesn't pertain to them. And this is one of the reasons why they do not want to go into some of these scriptures because it proves that there is no new covenant for these other nations. There is no kingdom of heaven for these other nations. Because you see here that if these nations were able to get the new covenant, they would have the law written in their heart and they would not have to struggle about whether or not they need to go to the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? So we'll go down to verse 18. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague. Okay, that's where the curses that were going to be put upon all these other nations that persecuted us, that we're going to get curses. Okay, no rain, which leads to famine, plague, which is disease, which leads to also death as well. There shall be the plague work with, all right, Yahweh will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment. Okay, this shall be the punishment. This is future tense. This is being talked about because it will happen in the kingdom. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So you see there, if a nation refuses to serve the Lord and decides to rebel and not want to come to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, they will receive no rain and the plague. That's going to be the punishment. Now, if people want to believe that these other nations, that all nations can be saved, here it is, the kingdom is set. They got to come to Jerusalem. Why don't they willingly do it? And why would they hold back from being coming to the Feast of Tabernacles? Because again, the law is not written on the inward part. It's not written in their heart. It's not written in their mind. And that's going to cause them to rebel. Because they're not under the new covenant. Because they're not Israel. Okay. So we see there that that is very obvious. That the new covenant does not pertain to these other nations. Because if it did, they would keep that Feast of Tabernacles. Especially knowing that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is there. Okay, the kingdom is set. The elect is there. What is there to fight about? You got taken down. It's over with. Do what we say. Well, what's going to happen if they don't do what we say? Okay? Now let's go into Isaiah 60 and verse 8. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Surely the owls shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them unto the name of Yahweh thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee, for in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. So you see here that these other nations are going to be serving. As you can see, the sons that will come from afar are going to bring silver and gold. We just read that, all right? Silver, gold, in abundance, much apparel. Okay? That's what's going to be given. The, 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 it's going to be gathered from about the heathen. They're going to have to they're going to be gathered all together. The riches of these other nations. It's going to be gathered to Israel. Okay? So, verse 10. Just like it says, the strangers shall build up the walls. They're going into captivity. The sons of strangers, they're going to build up the walls. Okay? The kings, they're going to minister. Okay? They're going to be ministered. They're going to be waiting. They're going to be waiters. The kings of the earth are going to be turned into waiters, servants. Hey, go get this for me. Go get that for me. Do this, do that. That's where they're going to be turned into. Okay? A bunch of butlers and maids. For in my wrath... He smote me, but in his favor he showed mercy. And that's how he's going to show that he is for all right, his people. This is verse 11. Therefore, 
Thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. Now that word there for forces is the riches, the wealth. Okay? The wealth of the Gentiles. Okay? Just like it said in Zechariah, how the riches of the heathen were going to be gathered up. This is the same thing. Okay? They got to bring that with them along with their rulers. All right? To serve. Now, verse 12, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So if any nation bucks up or kingdom realm that's around now when the kingdom is set up and they're forced into serving the elect. And if they do not do it, they're going to perish. They're going to be utterly wasted. Okay, they're going to have plagues and curses and calamities fall upon them. Okay, so that's how we know, again, that these other nations are not going to inherit no new covenant. In fact, they're going to inherit captivity. That is the promise of the new covenant according to the scriptures. And if they do not serve, right, the Lord of hosts, his elect, they will be utterly wasted. So hopefully this is edifying. And again, I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom.